Okay, so for today, we covered some, I think I say this a lot, <laughs> we covered some really big topics uh, in the JavaScript course. And as I'm talking about it, I should have already had it up, but I didn't because uh, here's what I added and what I want you to add is we added the UUID last time, but now we're actually going to implement an edit page. Um, and the rest of this, I'm not ne necessarily going to implement right now, but I want you to be thinking about this idea of dates, right? If your app needs dates, using moment.js is really good, okay? So I definitely will be using this. I just kind of did a uh, handle it a different way today. But I think this discussion about dates, uh, because again, I mentioned this before, just standard JavaScript dates object is not that great. Okay, so what we're going to focus on, and I'll just come over now to our output, is now, so create your new folder, right, in the public repo, and then copy the content we had from Monday. Now, the one thing or a couple things I'll tell you here is that I want you to, and you can bring over the form HTML. Let me just show you. Maybe it will help if I'm actually talking about it and showing you. Oh, it is here. There it is. Okay, so this is my folder from Monday. And the form and the script JS was there just to give you an idea of how to do validation. I would not want to see that in today's folder because what I want you to do today is take that concept that you learned and implement something in your code base that outputs some kind of error message. And I'll show you mine uh, and then uh, just briefly look at some of the code that I wrote to do it. So let me flip over and here's my output. So one of the things that I did is if some if the user put in a non-numeric value, then uh, current time needs to be a number. Example, 75 is equal to 730. Okay, so that's the first thing I did. And we had already done uh, to where if they didn't enter anything, right? But I also added an additional. So that was my first one. It had to be a number. My other one was that at nine o'clock, because of the class time at eight, right? Not enough time to get to class. So I didn't um, do the process of adding to local storage. Um, but I did give an error message. The other thing I did is as soon as they entered or clicked back into here and started typing, then it clears the error message. So it added just a little bit of functionality of what we saw before. So let me show you how I did this. In, um, in my app.js, okay, in my form, um, added my uh, event listener, I added some, I added a call to valid input. Okay, now I created this function in order to hold all my validation and because that just made the most sense. You could write it right here in the event listener, okay? But what happens is that tends to make that event listener really long. I mean, to me, it's already getting too long and I really should start thinking about other ways I can streamline this. But now let me show you because I put it and again, this idea of the functions JS is really helpful. So what I did is I created a valid input and I passed in the two pieces of information that I needed very much what we saw. I set up and I called mine error messages. I did some logic of, you know, the not enough time. Uh, I did is number, which is not actually is in a n is not a number. Uh, then I um, I pushed a message onto the array. And then if the length was, and again, this is the same concept we saw in uh, Monday, but I'm using it in my own code for my own validation needs because I, you have to think about, right? Users are not going to give us good information. We have to give them kind of guardrails, this validation to do it. So then I updated the messages and then I returned as true. And then over here, I said is valid, right? So, sorry, returned as false if I actually had errors. Otherwise, I return as true. And only, again, the idea of a truthy value. Uh, if, it's, if it's true, then I will run the rest of my code 
to actually set up and get ready uh, building my object, pushing that onto the array of objects, hitting a save, and then doing a render. So I only do these tasks if it's valid. And this is a <laughs> very common way to do things. So learning this is good. So figure out a way in your code right, to implement something, right? Because again, you need to have at least two inputs and I'm validating only one, which is fine, right? But that one validation, that one input has multiple things it could be. We are actually testing it in one sense for three things. Did you enter it? And then, you know, if you entered it, did you enter a correct uh, value? Uh, was it a numeric value? And then was that value out of the bounds of what we did? So I actually, in this case, did three checks. One, by using the attribute, and the other two by using some code. And then also, and I'll show you how I did this, is then, uh, no matter if it was valid or not, I clear the inputs. And you want to do that. You want to clear the inputs. when It's that visual sign for the user that you've accepted their output, you've given them a message, or in this case, let's say I did have a good, right? So I did have a valid input. Then I added, I rendered, I saved into local storage. I then rendered what I have in my, my memory for local storage, okay? So this part of what we're doing, this adding validation, uh, is again, something that we're, we're <laughs> adding on top of what you're already learning, okay? In addition, do some CSS styling. It doesn't have to be hard. It can just be simple. And I'll just show you my style. So I do have a style CSS, CSS file in my directory, okay? Uh, I just set up a body. Uh, I did set up a Google font. I think that's a really easy way to kind of make things look good. I did set up an, uh, I, uh, and CSS for the error, um, the div. So it uh, highlights it as red. I did all set all my links as green. And then I did a center, um, class just to, uh, and you see this output right here where I created this center. So it didn't take a lot to kind of kick up that output a little bit. So you don't have to do a lot, but the more CSS you learn, right? And there's great ways if you don't have any CSS experience, you want to come talk to me, or if you want to just do some simple YouTube, right? Beginner CSS, do that and just understand how to basically change the color. Um, and by the way, let me show you how I did the Google fonts. As I went over to Google fonts, and Google Fonts, I think, are great. And then I looked through here and I found one I liked. Okay, there's a lot. You don't want to add more than one at most two because they are a little bit heavy depending on which one you use. All right, let's say I was using this one. And then I could say, and these are these are how, how big these are. These are light, uh, so it's a lighter. Uh, and this really refers to the way it's rendered. But let's say I wanted this one, I would select this. And then this is what you put in the HTML, and this is what you would put for the CSS rule. Okay, so this went in my HTML up in my head section. This went in my CSS. So again, coming back here, right? That's why you saw this here. And then in my index file, that's why you see this right here. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, actually it was more than one there. Evidently there were two links inside of there. And then here is the link to the CSS file. Okay, so this should be fun, right? Uh, again, you don't have to spend a ton of time. Again, ask me on Discord if you want uh, me to throw out. But of course, if I was you, I'd start with YouTube. I'd do beginner CSS if you have no CSS. But just do some simple styling because this is going to be part of Dev 1. Okay, so now, in addition, now I want you to set up a details page and or an edit page. And I ended up doing a details page, not an edit page. And this is where, and you're going to hear me talk, and you've heard me by now talk about this in attendance, the idea of CRUD, right? So CRUD operations, create, read, update, and delete. So, um, so this is step two, is update DOM to render uh, your local storage, the data that you stored and then brought back from local storage to include an AREF with a list or with a reference to that UUID. So let me show you what this is. So for mine, 
and I can break this open, right click inspect. And he showed us how to do this in this section. So this shouldn't be a real, this shouldn't be new. But each time I rendered um, my DOM, right, generate my DOM for this detail, I then in, I built an A ref and then I put the file I wanted it to open and then pound and then the UUID. Okay. Now, by the way, there are other ways to do this. This is just one way. Uh, you could have done it in place to where it just showed the detail, but I think it's good to know how to pass to a new page. Right. So again, what you're going to learn here is if you click on one, then up in the URL, you write new JavaScript for this page to then uh, lit, you know, list something. I just did a view. Again, you don't have to do an edit. A view at minimum, do something that views some of that detail that you didn't present. Now you'll notice what I did here is I changed my output right uh, for each of my entries to say how many minutes I had to complete four tasks. So I didn't show all the tasks, and that way when I click on it, I can show the tasks that I do in the morning. Okay. Now, so how did I do this? Well, this one, of course, builds on what you've already learned. So in this case, I, I develop, I created in my generate task DOM, right? Um, I, I did an A tag and then I updated that A and I called it day link. Uh, there's the day, right? Pound and then the day.uuid. You could have called it ID. I probably should have called it ID, but I didn't. Um, and then I updated the text, right? And then appended it in and then return that because right here, all I'm doing is iterating over. So there is definitely some of what he did that I didn't. Uh, I wanted to kind of make this a little simpler because now that you've learned the different ways that he he's showing two different ways, the notes and the to-do, I definitely followed more of the to-do. It was more along the lines of what I needed. You can do it either way you want. Okay, so when I say update the DOM render to include an anchor, uh, a tag with reference, right? Uh, and in this case, uh, the ID, I should actually specify that, uh, that what I'm talking about is this is a link and that link has built into it the UUID, which is the whole reason we're using the UUID, okay? And then, you know, bring that to a new page. I ended up using for this new page, my day.html. Um, I ended up using that same CSS file, which definitely makes, you know, styling easier. You just include, that's part of the reason cascading style, sh style sheets are so great. Okay. And then I wrote a new, I did include functions uh, because that way I could go get, and he shows this. Here's my, my day.js file, very small. Uh, I pulled the, off the hash, that ID number. I go get all my tasks. I do a check to see if it is actually uh, the the ID does match what I have, and then if not, I send them back to the index page, and then I just do a for each uh, onto my task, and I output each one. Okay, but again, your output's going to look different here depending on what you want to do. So this is what I'm talking about. With number three, create a new HTML page. I name mine eight day, create a JS. I call mine JS, day.js, and render the item. The And when I mean item, I mean that specific entry, right, um, into uh, the new DOM and allow it to be updated. Okay, I should say allow it to be displayed or updated. I think at minimum, uh, it, displaying it, it's pretty simple. Updating it's a little more involved, but not a lot. He goes over that, right? And then this is what I was saying before. Add some CSS styling, right? Uh, I've, I've gone over mine already, but add some CSS styling into there. So just to end with this. So the idea of CRUD application, so I'm going to create Right. So the thing I have to need to do, I need to do a delete because I can definitely create uh, data here. Right. I can create that creates. Right. I can update it. Uh, and that's where on this page, maybe I'd give them an opportunity to add more. I'd get, if in, in my case, I'd actually have to give them the ability to actually update their uh, the current time, which I could do. Right. 
Um, so delete would be the one I need to add and I will do that. I just didn't do it for this uh, recording. I will play with, but that was, we saw that as pretty straightforward. You put an X here so that you can delete uh, each one of them. So we're pretty close to CRUD here. And really when you're thinking about your dev one, that's really where we're working on pretty close to a CRUD operation for whatever your topic is. Okay. All right. I hope this helps you. You are more than welcome to implement Moments.js um, into here, integrating this into there. Uh, but at minimum, I've gone over the requirements that you need to do for tonight, right? So you have four major steps that you have to do uh, for tonight. Uh, do uh, I will add the, you know, give us the get hack link, reply to two students to get full points. All right, reach out if you want to tech talk about any of this. Have a good one.